It's John Santucci from tcpalm.com, Treasure Coast Newspapers. This course, Dennis, I need no introduction, Jacob. We are at Treasure Coast High School. And the Titans are still going after one of the biggest upsets in the state last week, but we will get to that. Dennis, uh, before we talk about these guys, your biggest takeaway from uh, the first round of the playoffs. Well, before we get to that, I wanted to give a quick shout out to South Orks volleyball team on winning the Class 7A state championship on Saturday. Yeah. Only the second state title in the 35 year history of South Forks, and congratulations to the Bulldogs on a well deserved championship. Absolutely. Now, the takeaway from the first week yeah. of the playoffs, I think so I have two. I think the, the, the obvious one to me was Vero Beach and Sebastian River advanced on the strength of their teams. Vero Beach's offense completely took apart Ridge in the first 13 and a half minutes. I don't think any team in area history has ever started a playoff game better. 231 yards on four scoring plays. They're up 28 nothing. They wound up winning 42-28. Sebastian River, what can you say? Completely shut down Matanzas. Got a, a punt return and two safeties in a 10 nothing win. Seventh shutout of the season. Absolutely sensational play by the defense, and they earned a shot at Mainland. Right, so yeah, when Ron about. Freeman, um, their uh, defensive tackle outscores the opponent, you know you're doing something really well uh, <laughs> on defense. So, um, absolutely, Vero's offense, uh, I think they really answered the bell. We were saying all week this is going to be a tough game for them. This might be the toughest game um, of, of any of the area teams in the first round, and they absolutely uh, responded as well as I think Coach Jankowski could have hoped. So, what's your second takeaway? Well, I think just the play of, of St. Edwards. You know, when they were 0-2 and facing some severe roster issues with injuries, they were only down to 14 or 15 players. That We talked about they might not be able to finish the season, and here they are in the Sunshine State Athletic Conference Championship game against St. Stephen's Episcopal this week. Unbelievable turnaround for this team. They have played so well. It goes to show you there's a lot of analytics when you're, when you're measuring the performance of high school sports. Heart is one you can never put a number on. And I think St. Edward's play has shown that this season. Absolutely. And this is something we've said for years in, in our own office. Uh, Bill Mott is one of the best coaches in the area. And he doesn't get enough credit because they're at a smaller school. But for him, like you said, to take an 0-2 team that, by the way, no offense, was not a good 0-2 team. They got blown out in their first two games. For them to respond the way that they have, um, beating an undefeated Windermere prep team and handily beating them, um, impressive job by that coaching staff and those kids. Um, okay. We have uh, two, uh, excuse me, three round two games. And, and like you said, uh, St. Ed's is playing in, the, in their championship game. We'll get to that. Of the three round two games, Mainland at Sebastian River, Martin County at Vieira for the second time this year, and then Treasure Coast at Vero again for the second time. Who has the biggest challenge of those, those, of those uh, four area teams? I really think it's Sebastian River. I think Mainland is ranked number one in class 6A for a reason. They've scored 500 points in 10 games, and they have been peaking at the end of the season. They've only allowed 21 points in their past five games. So this is not only a team that can run up a lot of points, they can stop people too. And when you look at the way Sebastian struggled to get points on the board against Matanzas, the offense was shut out. They had to get defense and special teams to win it. That looks to be an uphill battle, especially when Mainland beat Sebastian River in the playoffs a year ago. That was a regional opener. This one's a regional semifinal. Yeah, one a coach yesterday uh, sent me a text. Have you seen this kid from uh, Mainland? I won't say who, but he's, he's sitting right there. And. Uh, the kid's huge. He's enormous. And I actually I actually texted uh, Sebastian Rivers' coach. I said, hey, what, what do you do to this guy? He said, I hate my life. I don't know what we're going to do to stop him. So, um, yeah, they're, they're a tough draw. I got to say Martin County, more from the mental aspect of going to Vieira for the second time this year, third time um, that they're going to go there in the last two years, and the first two games have not been close. I think there is a mental hurdle as much as a physical one to saying, okay, when we step off the bus, can we actually win this game? If they can answer that question, if they can actually believe that they can get off the bus, I think you might see some good things. But th that's the first thing is can you believe that you can beat this team on the road? And of course, conversely, the errors, like we were the 7A state runner-up right. last year, we're confident in what we're doing, and they're, they're playing like it too. So very interesting matchup there as well. Okay, like I said, we're at Treasure Coast. They've earned the right uh, for us to be here because they, they pulled off the upset last week, 28-27 over Osceola. To put that in perspective, Osceola, 2016, or excuse me, 2015 state runner-up, 2014 state runner-up, state semifinalist the two years before. The juniors on that team don't know anything but the fourth or fifth round of the playoffs. These guys knocked them out after six days. So um, is this the biggest upset uh, in Treasure Coast history since we've gone to this format where the runner-up gets in as well? Uh, very possibly. I, I think it's the highest ranked team that's lost. I, I haven't gone back and looked at all the ranked rankings of the opponents have lost 
to area teams, but certainly in recent years it ranks right up there. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the biggest win in school history, though. I would say that was when they beat Boca in the regional semifinals, I believe, in 2009, 2009 to get to the regional right. final. That's still a bigger win, and obviously if they win this week, that would certainly be one of their biggest wins, maybe the sweetest win ever. Absolutely. You know, it was interesting. I'm watching the game, and, and I don't think I don't think you guys could have anything go right for you in the first uh, – you get there late, everything looks like it's against you. They were very confident about what they'd done to you guys last year. And from, from the opening kick, I mean, Treasure Coast said, look, we're here to play. So let's talk to these guys, uh, Jonathan Thomas. Um, what, uh, what in the world was that game like for you guys last week? Man, <clears throat> coming off the bus late, you know, being stuck here for a little minute. We knowing that this is a good team we have to face. We're trying to get some time to, you know, settle ourselves in before we go in the game. But we came out there, as soon as we got on the bus, we were ready, we knew we were ready. We knew what we had to show up and what we had to do. And we got on the field, you know, uh, our linebackers did a good job stopping the run. You know, we had a big turn by Jordan. You know, Cedric, E, they all made a good play. D-line did good. And then we uh, did what we had to do and we executed on offense, running the ball, and everything went uphill from there. You and I talked about this uh, before we started the video. Obviously, Jordan Edmonds' 83-yard uh, kick return was the momentum changer, I think, in that game because they just scored twice. That was the first time they had the lead all game, and then it took they had the lead for about 12 seconds. Um, when, though, as as a, as a player in that game, when do you feel like okay, we've we've got this? You know, we we're taught not to give up over here, so we gonna keep going to the last second, till every second, because even if you've seen the last play. They kind of got, almost got us. So we keep going to the to the clock. Say zero zero. We gonna keep fighting. Okay, which win in your high school career? I'm gonna say so far because you might have a couple more. But which win has been the biggest? Was it Osceola last year? Central this year? Or Central last year? Is it Osceola this year? Yeah. Central last year. I think Osceola was the biggest win for us because we've always dreamed about going back to Vero. You know, they're a good team. We want to make sure that we can go and handle business over there first because we have some unfinished business with them. All right, so you're getting your dream. You get to play Vero again. What's the key for you guys uh, on Friday? You know, they have a good running back, good linebacker core, you know, so we're going to have to just make sure that we get our blocks right on the O-line. We're going to run the ball. We're going to keep doing it, keep doing what we do. And then defense, they're going to stop the run, control the pass. And if we stick to that plan to win, we're going to be good. Awesome. Appreciate it. Rashawn Yates, defensive end. Had some big, big tackles last week. You and I were talking Saturday. Um, what's the, there's a big difference between Osceola's wing tee and, and Vero's spread. What's the biggest difference as a, as a defensive? Um, I feel like Vero can do a lot more things than Osceola can if they're in the uh, wing tee, but because they can spread it out, and if you try to stop the spread, they can run it. So you can't, just, you got to try to, everybody has to do their assignment. Defense has to do, linebackers have to uh, stop the running, DBs have to stop the pass, so they can spread it out and do whatever they want. What was the biggest challenge for you guys when you played them a couple weeks ago? Um, the biggest challenge was, I feel like maybe stopping the run, and we can't give up on ourselves. So if they they score a touchdown, we can't get down and feel like the game's over. We had to keep fighting through the whole thing. Um, was that the biggest win of your career last week? Um, for the team wise, yes, I feel like it is. How? Was it hard to put that kind of a win because it was so dramatic? Was it hard to put that, get past that and start focusing on Vero? Or is it pretty easy just to get going? And I feel it's easy to get going because we know that it's not just Osceola. We, there's more to that. And everybody's, I feel everybody's main goal is to go to state. So, you know what I mean? We have to get past it. It's not just Osceola. The season's over. We beat them. We have more than that. So, I feel awesome. everybody's more focused now. Awesome. Appreciate it. Coach? Coach Jones, I guess the, the first question is, Who's in charge of making sure the bus arrives on time this, this week? <laughs> you know, um, the, 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 the buses were ordered. It was, uh, it was uh, you know, some difficulties, I'm sorry, difficulties with the, uh, with the bus company itself. Um, so everything was good on our end. It was just, you know, on their end. And um, truth be told, you know, everything happens for a reason. You know what I mean? So we didn't get upset, you know, we just, you know, most guys were panicked, you know, I was kind of laughing about the situation. I just think everything happens for a reason, you know, who knows, you know, we get on, we will get on the bus and we get on time, you know, we're on time and maybe it's an accident waiting on us. So you kind of got to just have faith that everything's going to turn out in the end, you know, the way it does, you know, and it's not the first, you know, first time, like I said, we kind of 
before we ordered a charter bus and the AC didn't work, work on it and we didn't, we're like we're not putting the boys on there. And um, I think that kind of helped prepare us for this time. So when it happened this time, the kids was kind of like, okay, we've been here before. Coach, uh, you don't always get a second chance at an opponent, but you got it with Vero Beach. What convinces you that things could be different this time? Um, who knows? You know, we just got to try to do what we do and get better at what we do. You know, they're putting up a lot of points. Um, really good program. Real strong tradition there. Those big backs. You know, we just kind of got to got to do what we do and, and, and hope that the ball kind of bounces our way. You know, Vero Beach has won 36 in a row at the Citrus Bowl. Mm -hmm. They're projected to win the Class A Day State title by Joe Pinko's power ratings. And they're the top remaining ranked team in 8A. With all that, isn't there a way to, don't you think maybe the pressure's on Vero this week? I don't know, man. They've been there. Like I said, they have, they've been there before, you know, and um, I don't know how much pressure is, is, is on them. You know, they've been successful like 36 times, like you said, so they're just kind of, I'm sure, you know, and with the coaching staff they have, they're going to have prepared. They're not going to be unprepared. They'll be ready for it. So what do you have to do this time that didn't happen the last time to pull out a win? Um, we just got to make sure we settle in. I don't think we really settled in um, to, you know, um, uh, early in the second half, um, last game. So we just got to make sure we settle in and everybody's, you know, is, is ready to go um, at that time. So, um, like I said, good program, good, you know, good tradition. Coach Janikowski is a real good guy, you know, you know, texting me after, you know, certain games, congratulations, stuff like this. So we, you know, we understand, you know, uh, what type of program we're, we're going up against. Coach, thank you. All right, Des, let's get to it. Uh, let's start with the Sunshine State Athletic Conference Championship uh, game. Uh, uh. Florida Bowl three. Okay. That's a skull. Florida Bowl three. Uh, St. Ed's on the road, Novito playing uh, St. Stephen's Episcopal. How you see this one playing out? You know, on paper, it looks identical to last week. You know, Windermere Prep had one ten in a row. It scored gobs of points, and St. Ed's won 30 to 18. Of course, they did have the home field advantage. This week, St. Stephen's has won 10 in a row after an opening loss to Community School of Naples, also scoring lots of points. You know, the thing about St. Ed's is every time you think maybe it's time to count them out, right. they deal themselves right back in. I'm not going against them now. I think they've come too far not to finish the job. They get their first league championship since 2010. They win this, what did I write down for this? 35-31, I think it will be high scoring. I, I agree, I think, I think uh, St. Ed's is gonna have a little party for themselves uh, Saturday night. Uh, I think they win this game. I think it will be close, 31-28. I think St. Ed's holds on to win this one. Um, all right, 6A, number one, Mainland, number 10, Sebastian River. How do you see this one? Well, Mainland won 35-3 to last year in the regional opener. And the way the Bucks have been playing, they look like a team that's peaking towards the run of the championship. They're living up to that number one ranking. Sebastian River's defense is lights out, but there's no way their offense can compare with, Main with Mainland. I think it's going to be close for a while, and then it's going to be way too much Mainland, far too often, 28-7. to 7. Mainland wins, but it's still going to be the best season in Sebastian history. Last year's game, uh, Sebastian came out, had a big run to set up a field goal, and then they, uh, the offense just couldn't get enough first downs. And you can't, I don't care how good your defense is, can't be on the field that long. The offense has to get first downs this week. That's the key for them. I don't think they'll get enough. I think, uh, I, I like your score, actually. I think uh, you said 28-7? Correct. 28-13. I think um, they'll get some things going, but not enough. And I think Mainland will, will end that uh, historic season for yeah, Sebastian one, one note, that Mainland's lowest point total this year is 35. So Sebastian <laughs> holding the 28. That would certainly be a feed. 35 is a team that a lot of teams, I think, there's a point number a lot of teams would, would wish for. Yes. So for that being their worst output is unbelievable. Um, Martin County at Vieira. Vieira... Uh, has won this game every year since, what, 2013, I believe. Um, do the Tigers have a shot? Well, uh, Vieira has won, I believe, six in a row against Martin County. Blast them in the playoffs last year. Blast them in the regular season. Scored 55 points. It's only three short of the school record for points allowed in the game. And Vieira has scored 52, 55, 51, 37, and 41 in its last five games. So the Hawks, who were in the state runners up in 7A last year, also look like a team that's peaking. Martin County's got a terrific passing attack, no question about it. But I think that Vieira is just is peaking at the right time. They've got a defense to go with that offense. I don't think Martin County's defense can measure up you know, to stopping uh, Vieira's uh, offense. And while Martin County has that terrific passing attack with Austin Kirkendall, Tanuka Martin, and George Johnson, I just don't think it'll be enough. 
I think Vieira wins again, 41 to 27. 41. See, it's interesting. I had the over under at 63, which, by the way, for gambling on high school football, you need a life. But um, you have it 68. I like that. I, I think it's going to be right at 63, but I think it's going to be uh, Vieira winning this one uh, 42 to 21. I, I just don't know if I think Martin County is going to put up some points and put up some yards. And and Austin Kirkendall is within striking distance of the area single season passing record. Um, and, I, you know, we hope he gets it. I, I just don't know if they're going to have enough defense. One thing to point out that. My pick is based on the fact that they don't generate a parade of turnovers so things that can change the game. That's the, for Martin County to win, they must make some game-changing plays, not only in defense, but on special teams. Well, and they can't give up three turnovers. I, I talked to Coach Kenyon today. He said, look, we can't throw an interception, have them return it to the eight, and think we're going to win the game. So uh, I think they had three turnovers last time. They played a bunch of them last year in the playoffs. They can't afford those turnovers this year. Okay. These guys play Vero Beach. Before we... Uh, I'm going to throw a, a, a wrench at you. Before we, um, before we give our picks, um, what do you see as the key for Treasure Coast to, to pulling off another upset? I think it's identical to what they did last week. Uh, make a big play on special teams, get some plays on defense. Remember, they had four takeaways against Osceola. Right. That's how you beat a team that's ranked number two in the state's unbeaten. They got a punt return, no, a kickoff return for a touchdown. If they could do something like that against Vero Beach, they'll be right in the game. Don't, it's okay. Jordan Edmonds had a punt return two weeks ago, so it's, it's, uh, he seems to do it every week. Um, you know, for me, I, I think the magic number when I look at these guys is 17. I think you want to have 17 total first downs and turnovers combined, whatever number that is. Last week, I think they had nine first downs, four turnovers. I think turnover counts more than, than a first down. But if they can keep the ball... Um, Offensively, if they can get first downs, which I don't think they got enough of last time they played Vero Beach, they've got to be able to establish some things that that uh, three yard mentality that the offensive line has done such a good job with. If they can get three yards of play, I think they're going to be in great shape. So um, I think that's the key. 17, can they get that number? Uh, what's your prediction for this one? All that said, <laughs> so, some, things, some things don't change. You know, uh, Vero Beach has won the last six games in the series all by double-digit margins, and they've won the last three that have been played at, at the Citrus Bowl. They have played extremely well at the Citrus Bowl. That's the one thing you say about Bureau Beach. When you win 36 in a row at home, that's the longest home winning streak in area history for any team. It's just hard to look past it, especially when you look at a team that's averaging 40 points. Unless Treasure Coast can duplicate what they did last week, forcing turnovers, getting a huge special teams play, it's hard to imagine a repeat upset this week. So, therefore, I'm going to go with Vero Beach to win. It will be much closer, but Vero Beach wins 28-17. <laughs> and the violence has begun. I, I, picked, I picked Treasure Coast last week. You looked at me like I was crazy. That's all right. But I love the matchup for their defense. I thought with Osceola's offense that, uh, that the linebackers and defensive ends could just, just rush downhill. I think it's going to be a harder matchup this week. That, that, that's what I'm looking at is the matchup. Because um, Vero is going to spread you out, and the, you don't know if the run's coming, the pass is coming, and they're good at both. That's my biggest concern. I think the offense is playing at its best. I don't know if Coach Jones would agree with that or not. I think the offense is playing better than it has all season. Um, my concern, though, is the matchup, and I just, I just think Vero Beach at this point, I, I don't know that they're not the best team in the state right now. So for me, the matchup is not a good one, um, and that's not a shot at, at Treasure Coast defense because I think they've played incredibly well. I do. What did you say? 28-17. 28-17. I think it's going to be 31-21. I think the offense is going to get some points going, but I think that Vero Beach uh, is going to pull this one out, 31-21. They liked me last week, not anymore. Um, as always, we want to hear back from you guys. Uh, hashtag TC Prep Zone. Please send your hate mail to Dennis Jacob. Um, and uh, we'll see you next week. See ya. Talk to you and Sean, coach. Yeah, you, you and JT.